Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Wednesday. Hope we're having a wonderful hump day here and uh, hopefully getting excited for this pattern change that is really finally knocking on the doorstep. And many of you, uh, depending on where you're watching, are already feeling that this morning, especially up into portions of the Midwest. Um, so we're going to talk about that in today's video. We also have some severe weather ongoing we need to finish up talking about, and we will definitely do that. I'm probably going to try to make this video a little bit shorter, though. Um, I'm running a little bit behind schedule for work this morning. Um, so, again, I apologize about that, but uh, I've been working kind of nonstop outside of the YouTube thing, working uh, multiple 10-hour shifts here in a row, so I'm a little tired, a little worn out, and uh, tried to sleep in a little bit this morning, and that might come back to haunt me here. Uh, on the time uh, scale wise. Um, anyway though, <clears throat> let's go ahead and start talking about things. Obviously if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Like the video if you like it. Comment, let me know where you're watching from. Also, sorry I haven't gotten back to all of your comments. Uh, again, I've been crazy busy outside of uh, the YouTube realm of things, but uh, I will be much more freed up uh, going into next week. So expect things uh, to be a little, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, more interactive there in the comments then. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump on into things and start talking about what we're seeing. So uh, we do have a couple complexes of storms uh, kind of in and around the country right now. One, <clears throat> excuse me, like specifically back over sections of Arkansas, Oklahoma, uh, and kind of surrounding areas there with an MCV, which we'll show you on radar here in just a second. But uh, outside of that, the big just kind of pattern thing I want you to notice here is here is that big front that I was, uh, you know, mentioning earlier. Uh, and again, if you're on the northern side of this, much nicer weather, drier air, uh, and uh, just much more comfortable conditions. If you're still kind of on the eastern and southern side of that, uh, still dealing with those muggy conditions and the chance for strong to severe storms. So um, they call it a boundary for a reason. It's a boundary between two types of weather, nice weather and still more summertime muggy weather uh, with potential of some severe weather mixed in there as well. Now we can also see this on radar pretty well uh, as well here again just kind of follow where this line of rain showers and storms is and there's your boundary uh, not too hard to see here um, but uh, you know that's going to just be the big uh, kind of player here on the field uh, for the next couple of days uh, here in the United States. Now here's that MCV I was telling you about pretty uh, cool to watch on radar watch this little spin almost looks like a hurricane over land here into portions of Oklahoma uh, as that kind of you know spins away there uh, and you know just Kind of, kind of a cool thing left over from complex of storms yesterday. Other than that, though, uh, again, just kind of scattered showers and storms through much of the, uh, you know, muggy side of this boundary that I was telling you about. And as I mentioned, that will just really be a pretty common theme here through at least the next couple of days here. All right, watches, warnings, and advisories. Again, it has been hot. It is going to continue to be hot. I feel like, you know, I'm just beating a, beating my head against a wall here every day saying the same thing, but it's the truth. Uh, up and along the I-95 corridor from Myrtle Beach, kind of uh, even Georgetown, South Carolina, northbound, uh, Raleigh, Roanoke, Norfolk, uh, Richmond, uh, D.C., uh, Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York, Boston, and even up all the way towards Bangor, Maine, uh, very hot, muggy conditions today, and that is, in fact, going to help to fuel the thunderstorm risk as well. So uh, kind of a one-two punch from that heat, obviously the impacts from the heat itself, and then also the impacts from uh, the storms that kind of uh, gain some fuel from that heat. Now we also are dealing with uh, some flooding here into the Ozarks this morning. Uh, the green areas uh, kind of circled there on your map are flood watches or flash flood watches. Uh, and then the kind of dark burgundy, reddish, whatever color you want to call this are flash flood warnings. So again, we talked about that flooding threat a little bit uh, unfolding here obviously into the Ozarks and will likely expand in uh, area over the next couple of days eastbound uh, towards uh, the southeastern part of the country even further than this. Uh, by the time we get towards this weekend. So again, flooding is going to be a threat, and we'll cover that towards the end of today's video. Severe weather also going to be a threat here that we need to watch out for. Uh, we've got a couple areas to uh, look out for today, which uh, you can see on the map here. Um, specifically, the I-95 corridor is going to be a bit of a bullseye today from uh, kind of the Richmond area upwards towards uh, the Boston area. So that yellow area highlighted on your map, a level two out of five risk for strong to severe storms. Main threat today is going to be strong straight line winds, cannot roll out a couple tornadoes as well. Uh, and hail is possible, but on the lower threat scale um, compared to, you know, <clears throat> different, uh, different times of the year that we might have a higher hail threat. So I'm watching out for that. Also, marginal risks back out towards the Rockies, which we're not really going to discuss too much here. Uh, and then also back towards uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, which you'll see here on uh, one of our future radar maps. 
Now that was today's threat. Tomorrow's threat, we're going to do it again, but a much smaller area. But I think tomorrow could have just as much of an impact, just probably over a smaller geographical area from kind of Virginia Beach back down towards Myrtle Beach, um, Raleigh, Greensboro, Florence, South Carolina, Fayetteville, Lumberton, Elizabeth City, New Bern, Greenville, North Carolina, Wilmington. Um, again, a lot of those cities could be under the gun for some strong and severe storms tomorrow. Again, wind the main threat, but I don't want you to rule out a couple tornadoes, um, especially kind of here in to eastern North Carolina, east of I-95. Um, probably not strong tornadoes, but don't be surprised to see a couple quick brief spin-ups uh, as some of the ingredients are kind of a telltale sign of a classic uh, eastern North Carolina brief spin-up kind of day. So just uh, be prepared for that uh, and have that on your radar here. Quite literally, pun not intended. Um, Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Uh, back to the actual uh, weather here. Looking at the NAM for the next couple days, and kudos to the NAM. Normally, the NAM, I think, you know, struggles pretty much with a lot of things, but I think it's actually done a pretty good job the past couple days latching on to uh, kind of these complexes of storms, and it's forecasted it pretty well. So we're going to stick to it. Uh, it's done a good job. Might as well trust it for the rest of this uh, system's longevity. So with that said, here we go, getting into this afternoon, looking at the northeast and the northern mid-Atlantic. Uh, right around peak heating, thunderstorm initiation likely to occur here from upstate New York and uh, Vermont all the way back down towards the Ohio River Valley. And again, any of these storms could produce... Uh, strong straight line winds, an isolated tornado, and some hail, uh, but wind really being the highest of all of those threats. Now you will notice um, going later into this afternoon and evening that uh, the threat continues to slowly shift eastbound and again just more of the same just kind of working towards the I-95 corridor towards sunset and by the time we're getting around sunset expect these storms to kind of begin to congeal a little bit into more of a line of storms or maybe even a Boeing segment here so that's when the wind threat will probably really pick up uh, and that's why that slight risk is kind of centered on the I-95 corridor and unfortunately uh, this will be kind of right around rush hour traffic for places uh, like DC, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York City. So going to need to watch out for that. Uh, and again, even stretching all the way back down into Virginia could see some of these strong storms. So um, again, pretty just common theme throughout this afternoon. The good news is going into overnight tonight, still a couple scattered showers and storms, specifically up towards New England, uh, kind of uh, Connecticut northbound there up through Maine. Uh, but waking up tomorrow morning, much nicer conditions, much of those storms uh, kind of moving offshore, and our Thursday afternoon will be much nicer outside of a couple brief uh, showers uh, with maybe a couple rumbles of thunder in the afternoon, uh, kind of into our inland areas of the northeast, but much nicer day. Also, it's going to feel much nicer as well as some of those dew points will drop down and we finally get a break from kind of uh, the real tough uh, summer weather that we've been seeing. So again, one more day, you're almost there. Uh, I believe in you, we can do it, and uh, we will definitely hope for that. And I guess we can even run this all the way through Friday as well. Getting into Friday afternoon, again, much nicer conditions here uh, through the Northeast as that front kind of uh, drapes south uh, towards the Mid-Atlantic. <clears throat> All right, uh, Southeast Friends, probably where most of you are watching from, and uh, let's go ahead and discuss it. So we've had a couple of days now in a row with uh, Rumbles of Thunder working on through, and today will not be any different. Uh, neither will tomorrow or probably the next day um, for many areas in this part of the country. And um, again, this afternoon, it's going to be more of the same. It's going to be hot. It's going to be muggy. And it's probably going to be stormy for a lot of folks as well here. Also, I think it's really awkward to just stop talking randomly and sip this water. So I'm about to sip this water, um, just so you know. All right. Um, yeah. To be honest, this video feels a little bit like a train wreck. So I apologize about that. Um, uh, just uh, maybe an off day. Again, I'm really tired. <laughs> um, I ran out of Red Bull this morning, so I'm sipping just coffee, and I don't think it's really doing the trick. Um, also, um, you know, still not feeling the best, but I am feeling a tad bit better, so that is good. I'll uh, I'll run with that for today and uh, make a make a good day out of that. But um, anyway, again, back to the train wreck. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, it's going to rain today. Here we go. Um, this afternoon, Wednesday, more pop-up storms in the southeast. Again, we're just in this muggy, humid atmosphere uh, that uh, is conducive for these pop-up afternoon storms. So we'll see more of that this afternoon here getting into Wednesday, uh, which is today, obviously, past the noon hour. This is about 4 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, here we go. More showers, more storms working on through. 
uh, really anywhere from the Ohio River Valley, you know, eastbound are going to have a shot at these storms. So Nashville, uh, Atlanta, Birmingham, Charlotte, uh, Columbia, Raleigh, and then obviously up, to, up towards Virginia as well. We've talked about that. Uh, and you know, you'll notice these storms working on through. Now also, if uh, you remember, we had that marginal risk this afternoon. Watch out for that towards Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, and the Texarkana area. Uh, you know, in there, I wouldn't even be surprised to see a brief tornado because uh, we've kind of got a little bit of extra spin with that MCV. So uh, we'll need to watch out for that for sure. Could be something that could cause problems here. Uh, and, um, you know, just, you know, be aware of that. Now, per usual, a lot of the showers and storm activity will die down during the overnight hours, but there could still be some leftover showers and storms, especially back towards Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana, uh, Tennessee. Uh, and then we wake up tomorrow morning and uh, we're likely going to do it all again here um, into our Thursday afternoon. Again, here we go, more storms pop up, and this is when we have that marginal risk for the Carolinas, uh, specifically the Eastern Carolinas here. And as I mentioned, um, wind will be the main threat, but don't rule out a couple brief tornadoes. I'll tell you, I, I kind of like the setup. If I wasn't working tomorrow, um, I would probably even chase this because I think it's, uh, you know, maybe worthy of a trip. Also, I'm just dying to chase. I haven't chased in a while now. Um, but again, just be aware of that. I don't want you to think that wind is the only threat tomorrow. Uh, again, could see a couple brief isolated uh, spin ups. Not strong tornadoes, again, probably EF0, EF1 strength. Um, probably not even really EF1. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, just have that on your radar uh, throughout the day Friday, excuse me, Thursday. And then again, that kind of congeals into a line of storms during the overnight Thursday and into our early Friday. And we've got a pretty nice squall line working off the Carolina coast. Uh, during the early morning hours of Friday. And then here we go into Friday afternoon, um, you know, watching out for the potential of some more storms to bubble up, but that's as far as uh, this model goes out. So we'll have to end it there. All right, um, let's talk about some of the nicer part of this now. Uh, we've been talking about a lot of severe weather, which I'm sure many of you are tired of. I know I'm kind of tired of it. Uh, it feels like we've been talking about it all year. Um, but uh, let's discuss the chance of uh, some nicer weather. Uh, I think that's something a lot of us could go for, uh, including myself specifically. I think I would like to, you know, um, think about that. So here we go. Uh, as I mentioned, that boundary is going to have kind of two sides to it, a hot, muggy, stormy side uh, and a cooler, drier, nicer side. And I shouldn't even say, well, it will be hot and muggy on the southern side, but it'll still be nicer than it has been, uh, temperature-wise at least. Uh, dew points are still going to be up there. Uh, but again, that storminess and all is really going to help to, you know, tamper down on those afternoon high temperatures, which is definitely some good news. Also, we'll at least get some relief with that rain for a lot of us during the evening hours. So fast, uh, fast forwarding this to our Thursday afternoon, here we go, here's that boundary. Again, like I said, the Northeast much nicer, specifically the interior Northeast, probably still muggy along the Jersey Shore, uh, kind of up, excuse me, even towards the shore of uh, kind of Cape Cod and all, but uh, interior wise, Ohio River Valley northbound. So St. Louis, Indianapolis, Chicago, Detroit, Minnesota, the entire state of Minnesota, um, Iowa, a lot of these places, it's going to feel great. Even places like Pittsburgh are going to have a wonderful Thursday afternoon. Uh, and that's going to try to dive even a little bit further south for Friday. Here we go, waking up Friday morning. Even cities like Nashville, Memphis, maybe even Little Rock, uh, the Ozarks, uh, D.C., Philadelphia, New York, Boston. Uh, look at these nicer dew points only in the 50s. That's probably going to be the lowest dew points we've seen, uh, I think, so far in July, maybe even since uh, May or June. Um, so that is definitely going to be a welcome uh, change for a lot of folks in here. Now, unfortunately, uh, we'll get this into Thursday, or excuse me, Friday afternoon. <clears throat> Still um, quite uncomfortable for a lot of us in the southeast from Charlotte, um, Columbia, back towards Atlanta, Greensboro, um, uh, excuse me, I'm blanking here, Birmingham, Jackson, uh, New Orleans, kind of the usual suspects, still going to be muggy, but again, uh, those afternoon storms are going to help to tamper down uh, the heat indexes, so that will be good for sure, uh, and we'll, uh, you know, take any relief we can get, obviously, um, but uh, the unfortunate news is eventually, especially getting into early next week, here we go into next Monday afternoon, those dew points once again pull back northward, and uh, that muggy weather returns, although still uh, more comfortable than it probably has been. Um, but uh, just expect that return back to a little bit more of summer-like weather um, for just about everyone early next week. 
<clears throat> All right, so future radar for this, we'll pick it up on Friday afternoon, kind of where we left off. You'll notice, again, uh, a dry for the Ohio River Valley and Northeast, but still quite stormy for the Southeast, specifically the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi. Um, I think are going to be the biggest uh, winners here in terms of rainfall. So again, it's still muggy, but we're at least getting some afternoon storms for our Friday afternoon. Uh, and even into our Saturday afternoon here, you'll notice more of those storms bubbling up in the southeast. Uh, still relatively dry uh, for the Ohio River Valley. Um, but uh, you'll notice, you know, even in Sunday afternoon, more of the same. Quite stormy in the southeast. Uh, nicer conditions elsewhere before early next week. Um, here's, here we go, Monday afternoon. Again, a lot of the same, but those storm chances are slowly going to pull back northward as well um, as this uh, boundary lifts north as well. So, um, yeah. Uh, let's talk about um, how long is this going to last and what's the pattern like in the future. Uh, well, here's that trough we've been talking about that's kind of uh, digging back southward. A little piece of this is going to kind of get broken off and uh, stuck here in the south central plains uh, into this weekend and probably stay there really through even early next week. Uh, and you'll notice even almost intensifying a little bit here uh, throughout much of next week. So what is this going to mean? Well, it's going to mean a couple things. Uh, one, cooler, nicer temperatures here in the south central part of the United States, probably a bit more stormy as well. Uh, but unfortunately, on the other side of that, we've got uh, the Bermuda High or the Southeast Ridge that is also trying to flex its muscles a little bit here. Uh, and uh, we might get a little bit um, of some not, not great flow into the Southeast. Unfortunately, this is also probably going to up the dew points here uh, into the Carolinas, Virginia, and Georgia middle of next week. But I think it will also increase rain chances as well. So um, it could, you know, these rain chances that we're talking about this weekend could really last for a while here, uh, which is good because we've had drought through this part of the country. Also, again, any kind of afternoon thunderstorm is a relief from the heat, uh, which we will take as well. Now, temperature anomaly forecast here. Again, uh, below average temperatures working on in. This is Thursday afternoon. Um, obviously, most of us back below average, which will be great, whether that's because you have that cool, nice dry air or thunderstorms in the southeast. Um, still much nicer for a lot of us. Um, getting into Friday afternoon, more of the same. Third, or excuse me, Saturday afternoon. Uh, again, still much nicer. And then Sunday afternoon, you'll notice uh, temperatures getting back closer to normal, except for uh, the south central part of the country. Again, this is where I talked about that kind of piece of that trough uh, breaking off and getting stuck in here. Uh, again, noted here by those uh, bluer temperatures, uh, which again, driven by some rain as well here, but also just uh, cloud cover uh, in general. Now, the same trend really continues through much of next week, as I mentioned, uh, but watch what happens getting into later next week. Again, cooler temperatures kind of here where that trough gets broken off, but also, unfortunately, getting back above average temperature wise in the southeast um, due to kind of that flexing of the southeast ridge combined with the flow uh, from this um, you know, uh, low pressure here at 500 millibars back towards uh, Texas and Oklahoma. So uh, again, you know, we'll talk more about that as we get closer, but just a little sneak peek towards next week. All right, final thing I'll talk about here is rainfall and flooding. Today's excessive rainfall outlook. Again, we're already seeing some flooding towards Missouri and Arkansas. Could see more of that this afternoon. Same story for the I-95 corridor from D.C. northwards towards Philadelphia. Uh, could see some excessive rainfall today. As for tomorrow, the eastern Carolinas under the bullseye, but really anybody in the southeast could see uh, some flooding due to a little bit too much rain. Uh, and then we'll pull this into Friday. Same story. Southeast going to be the real bullseye here, specifically the coastal sections of the Carolinas, Columbia, Myrtle Beach, Florence, Darlington, uh, Lumberton, Fayetteville, Greenville, um, you know, New Bern, you know, those uh, general areas of North Carolina there and South Carolina. All right, so rain over the next week, a lot of it potentially upwards of half a foot of rain isn't out of the question in, in uh, certain coastal areas of the Carolinas, maybe even into the mountainous terrains of the Southern Alps. Uh, could see some higher rainfall totals as well, but much of the Southeast is going to pick up at least a couple of inches of rain through the next week. Uh, many places seeing even more than that. So uh, that's what we're working with here. Again, I'm sorry if the video felt a little terrible. <laughs> um, you know, sorry, I'll try to do better tomorrow, uh, but I uh, had to get a video out here and I'm running a little behind schedule, so probably uh, my own fault, really. But uh, either way, I appreciate you watching nonetheless. Again, if you haven't already subscribed and you're willing to after watching that, uh, do so. Uh, comment, let me know where you're watching from, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Wednesday, and I'll see you all tomorrow.